Hey guys and welcome back to another one of my crochet videos. In today's video I would like to show you how to make my lovely little worry pet. Now a little bit of a backstory behind these guys. So during the lockdown of 2020 I decided to come up with a nice basic design to use up some of my yarn scraps, you know, stuff that I need to get rid of and also what to do with them. So I thought I would leave them around in public for people to find with a nice little note on it saying what they are, what they do. And it's one of those where if you found it, I believe that you needed it. So these guys are incredible because they use up yarn scraps. So when you've finished with a project and you've got a tiny little ball left over that you don't know what to do with, make a worry pet. I mean, that's not enough to make anything big. So usually it'll be destined for the charity shop. So these guys work up really quickly they only take about half an hour when you get into the swing of it and that's what I'd like to show you how to do today is how to make some of these. So I'll just very quickly go on to the materials but first just let me show you this. So I printed out a little thing which describes what these worry pets are and they're found within the little plastic wallets when you find one of the worry pets and it says to my owner I am a worry pet, companion and friend when you need me. I am stuffed with not only stuffing, but offcuts of previous crochet projects too. That means I am full of inspiration, determination, patience and love. Give me a squeeze to release my magic and help ease your mind. Keep me in your pocket or bag so I'm always there if you need reassurance or to help calm anxieties. I'll always be there to help, listen and love. Promise. So, let's get on to the materials. So now that my audience has greatly anticipated the arrival of my creative hands, let's get on with the materials. You will need a few pins. You will need a tapestry or embroidery needle. A pair of scissors. And these are optional, but two 9mm safety eyes with backs. Now, when I say optional, they can be swapped out for any size, really. Depends how big you'd like the eyes of your pet. Or you could crochet them, embroider them, use felt and glue, or even use buttons if you'd like. So, there's the backs. Your very trusty 4mm hook, which is a G in United States. I always use this. It's my favourite one. I find that the size that it brings the pets out at is perfect. Of course, we're going to need a bit of stuffing. And here is the kicker. You know when you finish a project and you end up with these really tiny little scraggly scraps that you don't know what to do with? That's right. We're going to stuff some of these tiny little tails that you can't do anything with into these guys. So it is recycling them again. So I've got a bag here just to, just to pop into a worry pet. So let's move on. So now that we've got our crochet hook, another thing that you might wish to use would be a stitch marker. Now this is down to your personal choice. I love using these. It means that I never forget where I am. And also I can watch telly and know where I'm going because as soon as my hand hits this, I know in my head I need to move on to the next round. So I'll be using that. Now I'm going to use this as my top color, which would be here. The thing is, there is no limit to the colours that you can use. So I had a little tiny scrap of orange left and then I changed my colour into this pink for this one and then I finished it off with a nice purple. So there is no limit to the colours. And another one I'd like to show you is this guy. This is one ball of wool that changes colour as you work through it. So I thought, I'm not going to use it for anything else. Let's make a few pets out of it. So anyway, let's move on. The first thing that we're going to do is get nice and comfy in our yarn bowl and move him out of the way. And we're going to start with a slip knot to create our magic ring. And now in this magic ring, we're going to put eight stitches in it. 
So if you watch my previous video on how to make a magic ring, you will know that the first stitch is always a chain. So now I'm just going to do seven more single crochets into this ring to create our start. Okay, so there is our magic ring. So now the next round will be increase all the way around, which will leave you with 16 stitches. Okay, so the next round will be single crochet all the way around and I'm just going to pop my stitch marker in there now. Okay, so for round three, what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet increase all the way around. So the first stitch is a single, then increase, single, increase, single, increase, so on so forth until we end up with 24 stitches in this round. Okay, so round four will be single crochet all the way around. Okay, so that's round four done. So now for round five, what we're gonna do is we're gonna single crochet two and then increase all the way around, which will leave us with a total of 32 stitches. It's starting to take shape, I think. So round six to eight, so that's round six, round seven, and round eight, all we're gonna do is single crochet all the way around, which will be 32 stitches in each round. Okay, so there's round eight. It's really starting to take shape now. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a color change. So I'm going to use that blue that you saw me take out earlier because it got tangled up with what I was using. And to do a color change very quickly, all I'm going to do is insert my hook into the next stitch, grab the blue, grab hold of it, pinch it with these two fingers and pull it through. Now I'm going to turn that into a slip stitch and that will count as my first 
stitch which will be single crochet again so now from round 9 to 11 we're going to single crochet around with 32 stitches in that round we've already done one that chain and slip, sorry that slip stitch is one so now let's carry on with normal single crochets Okay, so before we move on to round 12, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this magic ring tower through and I'm also going to pull these through and sort them out. So for the magic ring one, I'm going to insert my hook through the magic ring, grab hold of that yarn, pull it through, pop it inside out very quickly, pull that as tight as I can and then just pop a nice, basic, simple knot on there just so it won't come back through next for these i'm going to poke my hook through where there's quite a large gap under each respective color so going into the works i'm going to come through this big gap here under the under the green i'm going to just pull that through nicely i'm going back in again underneath that blue grabbing hold of it and pulling it through the works pop it inside out again pull those nice and tight and just tie a nice quick knot in there now fold those back in and as you can see there is the color change it's as neat as I can do it on these worry pets I'm not complaining, it's good enough for me. So now for round 12, what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet twice and then pop a decrease in it. Not a invisible decrease, I'm going to pop a standard decrease as I like the reinforcement that that give, gives on an amigurumi. So there's my two single crochets and then my full on decrease. Stitch two together. So we're gonna do that all the way around and we'll end up with 24 stitches in this round. Okay, so for round 13, all I'm going to do is single crochet and then decrease all the way around. And that will leave us with 16 stitches in this round. So there's my single crochet and then a decrease. We're going to do that all the way around. Now for round 14, I'm just going to decrease all the way around. 
that will give me a total of eight stitches. So there we go, that's the body done. So I'm just gonna finish off now, give it a quick snip and pull that through for a nice finish off. So that's the body done. Next, let's move on to little horns here. So I'm going to use the blue again. I'm going to stick with that color. And first thing I'm going to do is magic ring six. So create our slip knot here. First stitch is a chain, five more singles to give us magic ring six. Okay, so now I've done that, my first round will be single crochet increase all the way around. And that will leave us with nine stitches in this, in this uh, piece. Okay, so round two and three will be single crochet all the way around with nine stitches in each round. Okay, so that's the end of round three. Now next to finish off in the next stitch, I'm just going to put a nice slip stitch in there. It'll just make it a bit easier, a bit more flush when I'm going to sew the horns onto the, the body of the worry pet. So I'm going to give myself a long tail as I'll use this to sew it on. And I'll just pull that through like that. Right, I'm just gonna very quickly make up a second one of these and then I'll show you what to do. Okay, so I've made my second one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the starting tail of the magic ring and I'm going to pull it as tight as I can. Next, I'm just going to put a quick, simple knot in there. And then I'm going to grab the whole thing and turn it inside out. This will give it more of that horned shape. And tuck that tail in right in there. There we go. And it just gives it that bit more of definition like that little bit more of point as you can see so again I'm just going to pull that as tight as I can put a knot in there and then just quickly pop it inside out and poke that tail right in there saves me stuffing it a little bit speaking of stuffing I'm just going to grab a tiny little piece of stuffing, ball it up in my hands, just so it'll fit nicely, and then just insert it into, into the horns. You might wish to use your hook to pack it down a bit, or use a little bit less, whichever you prefer. So again, I'm just going to ball it up a little bit, just to make it that little bit more firmer and just poke it in there. So those are the horns ready to go. So now let's talk about the body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to identify where the colour change was and this I would like to be the back of the worry pet just so it's a little bit more discreet. So I'm going to take my eyes and I'm going to count three up and it'll be on the third one is where I'm going to put my eyes. So from this colour change, there'll be one, two, and then put the eyes in on three. 
I'll take my first die, make sure it's on the front. One, two, put it in on the third one. So with these safety eyes, I'm just going to carefully pop it through like so. Just encourage it through the back. Pull it down over those ridges. I've made my stitches quite a bit tight, so this is fighting me. Ooh. And next to space the eyes out, I'm going to space them out by six stitches. So again, I'll use my hook to guide. So it's in the first, in that one. So this will be one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I want my eye in this hole here. I'll just widen that up a bit with my hook. So again, that's six stitches between the eyes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, eyeball. So I'll just take my second one and poke it through there where I've just widened it. I'll just take the backs and just set these in. I always like to set them down on, onto the second one so they're not too tight. There we go. And then this one. That's on the second one. There we go, they're both on the second one now. So it's starting to look like some sort of creature now. Next, I'm going to take up quite a bit of my stuffing. And the secret to stuffing these is do a little bit at a time. And I like to wrap the finishing tail around my fingers just so I can hold this nice and open while I stuff it in. Make sure that you get the stuffing at the back of the eyes, otherwise you end up with these ridges. So you want to bulk it out quite a bit around the back of the eyes. Just stuff it and move it around with your fingers so it's nice and nice and even, and it will really start to take shape. And now the moment we've all been waiting for. What do we do with all these? Well, I'm just going to take a bunch of them. These are all from other projects that I've done over the months. I'm going to screw them up into a nice little ball and I'm just going to stuff them right in the centre. So they're not around the edges, so it won't show up through the stitches. I'm just going to dob them right in the middle and it acts as a nice stuffing substitute as well. So if ever you're short on stuffing, just use some of these. I've got all sorts of colours, all sorts of thickness. It doesn't matter, it can all go in there. Right, that's just about as firm as I would like it. And for the last piece of stuffing, just because I don't want you to be able to see any of this, I'm just going to do the very last bit with normal toy stuffing. There we go, our pet's really starting to take shape now. So next, to close this off, I'm going to sew it closed with an ultimate finish. So I'll take my embroidery needle, tapestry needle, yarn needle, whatever you'd like to call it, thread it on, whoops, I don't do that. Thread the whole strand on. I'm going to insert my needle between the stitches 
of the last round. So between the front loop and the back loop, I'm going to work that round each of the final stitches. So it'll be eight times. There we go. And now I'm just going to pull that nice and tight, as tight as I can. And it gives me that nice ultimate finish. So I'll just pop a very quick basic knot there just to stop it from coming undone and thread this down and through the amigurumi. And then I can snip that off nice and tight. And that's going to go inside another worry pet in the future. We don't waste anything. So next, moving on to the horns, I'm going to have to take up a couple of pins from my trusty tomato and strawberry pin cushion and place the horns roughly where I would like them. So I always like to have them just above the eyes and slightly on the side. When I'm happy with the placement, I'm just going to pop a couple of pins in there and then do the same on the other side. And now because we finished with the slip stitch, I always like to have the finishing tail pointing down the pet so I know exactly what kind of spacing and position I would like. So there we go, I'm pretty happy with that position. Um, you can put them as high up or as low down as you would like. You can't make these wrong, it's however you would like to make them. So next I'll take up my trusty needle again, thread it up, and just very quickly sew these horns on so they're nice and secure. again. Then I'll just finish this one off and just dob a knot on there so that won't come undone. Thread it through, poke it out of the blue and that's ready to cut off. And next I'll, well lastly should I say, I'll sew this horn on and sorry to my little mascot, he's suddenly become a pincushion. This one is now coming to an end. Like I say, there is no right way or wrong way of creating these lovely little creatures. They can be as messy as you would like, as neat as you would like. However, it's the most comfiest for you to make. That is the key. As long as you make it however you would like, then it's made the right way. So I'll just snip off these last couple of tails that are destined to go into another worry pet at some point and there we have it there's our new little worry pet and I don't know where I'm going to leave him he'll be left somewhere special I'm sure so moving on to the note that I had talked about earlier in regards to these worry pets what I like to do is I like to put these guys inside a little plastic bag 
with this note attached to them and a small zip ziplock wallet and whenever i go out anywhere whether it's down to the shops or into another town to see a friend i just hide one of these somewhere and i let people find them so you can make as many of these as you would like you can also leave them for people to find i would just ask that you don't sell them unless it's for charity because I was selling these at £5 a pop and the proceeds were going to mental health charities and I thought that, that was a brilliant idea for them. So please share around, let people know how to make them and I really, really hope that you enjoyed learning how to make one of the Watery Pets. You can use any size yarn as I proved to myself with my really big mascot here and any size eyes. So these were 9 by 11 mil and these were just nine. So, yeah, sorry about being a pincushion. And like I say, there's no limit to the colour combinations or anything. You make them however you would like. There is no right way or wrong way. So please subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And I really, really hope to see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.